Hi guys, I want to talk to you about pictures and not being afraid. Lots of us are afraid to go into a gallery and ask questions and look at things because we think there's some kind of high art code, something that we can't penetrate, it's a different language. So we're going to just have a little look at a few different things and consider can we access them. On the table in front of me I have a range of different artworks and a book and where I'm going to begin is picking up this quite old-fashioned piece of work here. Now this is by an artist called Mustachio and he was a Renaissance artist. He died when he was quite young, he was about 26 or 27 and he potentially painted this when he was about 24 or 25. It was painted in roughly 1426 and it is in a church in Florence. It is painted directly onto a wall, it's called a fresco. Look at it a bit closer. So it's a religious painting, it's a picture of Christ on the cross. But this painting is a very, very important piece of work because it's the first painting where we see one point perspective. So I'm going to position it on my book right in front of us here. And I'm going to just grab some paper. If we look at the archway, we can see these lines all coming, radiating down to a point. Now I'm going to put a piece of paper on one of those lines at this side of the line and it's touching right here, the foot of the cross at the bottom of the step over there. And I'm going to get another piece of paper, just reaching over to my printer, and I'm going to take it and pop it on another line. And you can see that they're intersecting at the same point. Now it's quite a simple composition, but it's quite dramatic, and it's painted on the wall of a building using a mixture of pigment and plaster. So whilst you might not be particularly interested in its subject matter, or maybe you are, who knows, um, it's interesting to me because of the way it's been constructed. And so it's a piece of work I refer to a lot as an art teacher because it shows a very simple perspective. If you were at Manchester Grammar School and you were stood in front of the school arch, you're, you're stood on the drive near the Porter's Lodge and you're looking towards the main building, the arch is in front of you. You can see this very same perspective on the arch. You also see it on the two side arches, the footpath arches either side. Why don't you have a look at it when you're next there? So the next thing I'm going to show you on my desk is a book and it's a book I've had for a very, very long time. Look at this. It was given to me by my form tutor when I did a drawing for her when she had a baby back in 1991. I was doing my A-levels at the time. Now we're going to go to a painting um, in the book by Velasquez. He's a Spanish painter and this painting is from 1656. It's called Las Meninas, which means ladies in waiting, or it's sometimes called the fam familia, the family. So it's a painting which is very old fashioned. There's this period of art, this Baroque period, where we often look at these paintings and think they're quite dark, they look quite brown and sombre, and we think we can't access this work, but we can access it. Let's see. So we have this central figure in the middle of the picture, centrally, we have this little girl. I wonder who she is. She is the daughter of King Philip IV of Spain. I've got a name somewhere. She's called Margaret Teresa and she's surrounded by servants of the court, ladies in waiting and people within the court and this rather beautiful dog. Um, there's a guy here and he's got a paintbrush and there's a big canvas there. And we believe this is Velasquez himself. So he's painted a portrait of himself within the painting. So he's looking towards us, looking at the painting. Interestingly, the gaze of these people is looking towards us as well. There's a chap in a doorway at the back. There's some paintings on the wall. And then there is this strange, very strange sort of image here. And this is a mirror. And this in the reflection in the mirror is her father, the king, and his wife, her mother. So they are reflected within this portrait. Now this painting refers to an earlier painting. I'm going to see if I can find that for you just now. So here is the painting I was referring to. It's by Jan van Eyck. Now he was around much, much earlier, about 200 years earlier. This painting's from about 1430 approximately. And this is believed to be a betrothal or a marriage. And here we have this couple. And in the background, we have a mirror. There's a rather nice dog in this picture as well. I wonder if that's a connection. There's light coming in from the side, from a window, but there is a mirror. And there's believed to be, 
the image of the artist within the mirror. So if we go back to this painting by Velasquez, we have some interesting parallels. We have a mirror reflecting other people. We have an image of the artist, we have an image of a dog, we have a side light coming from the window. So this painting is referring to compositional elements from the previous painting. You may be interested in the Spanish court. You may be interested in to know more about this. It's a historic document. It tells us things about the paintings that were in this room or had been composed within this painting. It shows us a costume of the time and fashion to some degree. But this piece of work inspired other work. So the artist John Singer Sargent used compositional elements from here. The artist Goya did as well. And several artists have used it since, including Salvador Dali. But this is by Picasso. And I got this from the Guggenheim back in 2012 when I was in New York and I went to see an exhibition there um, with the black and white work of Picasso. And instantly I was drawn to this painting. Now, here we see an abstracted version of the young girl lady waiting on her. Look at the artist now has been scaled up in significance. I wonder if Picasso is suggesting that the artist is more important. This portrait in, in, the, in the mirror seems to have been reduced and this simple figure now in the doorway is quite dramatic in a different form but all the elements can be seen there. So I enjoy this painting historically. I found it quite intriguing these strange characters of the court. And yet I do like it particularly because many artists have referred to it in different ways with different work since. Now I'm going to show you some work by some pre-Raphaelites. I have, I'm going to move some things off the desk here so you can see them a bit clearer. And again, work that you might think looks a bit old fashioned. But let's have a little look at it. These paintings are from Manchester Art Gallery. So generally we're able to go and see this work and other work by the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. They were a group of English artists, there were poets, there were art critics, they were associated with John Ruskin. But they founded this movement, this brotherhood, in 1848 in London. And they sought this kind of return to a classical artwork, something that was quite beautiful, a return to nature. And they have these allegories and symbolism within their work. Allegories meaning a story within the work. So these two are by William Holman Hunt. Um, the Shadow of Death and The Hireling Shepherd. And this one in particular is from 1851. And this painting, I think, is quite an interesting painting. Now, you can go to the gallery and you can hear uh, professionals talk about it. And that's very, very interesting. Um, we're just going to have a little look at what's going on in this painting. So it is quite Victorian in its style. It's quite colourful. It's an oil painting. It's quite colourful. It's not particularly large. It's not as big as the Velasquez or the Masaccio we've just seen. And we have this lady and we have this shepherd. And the, in the field behind, we have a flock of sheep and a beautiful British landscape. They remember, they were interested in the beauty of nature. And let's see what's going on. Now, the shepherd is holding and showing the lady a death head moth. Now you might think, I don't know what that is, but if you've seen the poster of Silence of the Lambs or the scary film Silence of the Lambs, it's the moth that's got that, that kind of skull-like image on the back of it. So he's leaning around her, reaching around her, maybe he likes this lady, and kind of leaning in quite close into her personal space. No social distancing here. And uh, he's ignoring his flock. So there's his flock. What's going on with his flock? Because he is ignoring them, look, the sheep are straying. They're meant to be in this nice field, but they're straying into the corn. And I believe corn isn't particularly good for sheep. Look, there's one crossing the pathway, the dike, the ditch between the two areas. And there's one straying right across into the corn, up to no good at all. And then some of these sheep are really not doing so well. Look, they're lying down, they're rolling around on their backs. They're not doing well at all because this corn has upset their tummy. And the artist has said, and various people have interpreted over the, over the years, that there might be parallels between the church. Often these, this group of artists refer to literature, poetry, themes of love, death and society came up in their work. Um, and it's believed that the flock is representative of the flock within a Christian church and how if they're distracted, if they're morally distracted, then they can be left to wander and go off into dangerous territory rather than have the spiritual guidance. Now within pre-Raphaelite work, there's lots of symbolism. So all these flowers will have different meaning. And if you 
are fortunate enough to any point go to the art gallery I'll tell you lots more than I've just told you about this painting I think it's absolutely beautiful I think it's quite seductive to me in terms of its colours and I look at it and I stand in front of any of these paintings absolutely taken in by the skill of the artist the physical skill of painting these these curls these pieces of, of wood that have been taken off the lathe the beauty of the actual handling of the paint and the composition of these paintings I find, find quite attractive even though they are quite old-fashioned. So I'm coming now on to something much more modern and we have two pieces here by artists from the St Ives group and these guys live down in Cornwall and work down in Cornwall and let's have a look at something entirely different. So they're not figurative in the same way. By figurative, I mean the pictures with people and recognisable elements into them. This painting is abstracted. Now, because I know they're from the St Ives group, I look at this picture by the artist Terry Frost and it's painted in um, 1951, I believe. It's called Green, Black and White Movement. But to me, it looks like a little harbour with boats in it bobbing around on the water with strings attaching the boats to the boats. Um, possibly this is in plan view of like a harbour's edge and these boats are actually in an elevation view as they would appear on the water. Now, I'm interpreting some of this. If you look at it quite closely, there's quite interesting surfaces. You might think that this work isn't technically as skillful as the work we've just seen. Possibly, possibly not. But... I find it really, really interesting. I like it. I'm drawn to it. I like the modern style of it, even though it's from the 1950s. Now, this one is by um, a guy called Peter Lanyon. It's called Thermal, and this one is from 1960, so only a few years later. And it's a painting again, and we know it's coastal. These artists are on the coast in St Ives. And if I said it's like water... You might not, not necessarily agree with me, but it feels like water is flowing. I walked along the Heat and Mersey the other day, um, this long stretch of water there, and uh, was looking at the, the water pattern and the flow of water. I like the energy, the movement. Imagine painting this. You put the brush strokes down, you're layering things up, you might rub some things back. The process of making this work has energy and you can see that, whereas the process in here is very skillful but very laboured. Yeah, there's something about both that intrigues me. I like the story and allegory and symbolism of this work. I like the connections within this, this kind of reinterpretation by different artists. I like the perspective and the form of this. And yet I like the process of this work. So in all those things, I'm liking different elements. We're going to go on to consider in the next video, how do we analyse artwork?